One of the things the wise men symbolize, and in one sense actualize, on their way to Jesus is men who seek the truth, desire to know the truth about things, the truth about themselves, and especially the most important religious questions. For the most important thing in life is Jesus Christ and learning to center our lives on him. We notice they do not return to Herod, a person who symbolizes somebody who does not really want to know the truth but acts like it, but is unwilling to reckon where it conflicts with his life and how he is living, so he avoids going to Christ and wants to kill him. I was reading this week about the choice of evil in a book by Father Ripperture, and he states, it is the common experience of all men that some people choose what is in fact evil. And this is our experience whenever we sin. We have to reckon with the fact that we choose evil. But as a responsible and reasonable people, the church, guided by the Holy Spirit, understands a distinction between grave sin which can really destroy our relationship with God and one another, and then also venial sin, which is a slight offense that doesn't ruin the relationship. For sin is in the will. It happens when we choose something we know is wrong in our intellect, but because we want something, we ignore the truth. We ignore what we know is right in order to attain some good. A principle to understand as you strive to grow in holiness and become a saint is for it to be a sin, you must have full knowledge of it being wrong and do it anyway. A sin is not a mistake, it is a sin. And depending on what we choose when we sin in lies, the gravity of the offense. And since the law of God is written on the heart of all humanity, all know it to a certain degree. This is the cause of all conversions. For the truth of our need to repent of this or that correlates with our hearts and our goodwill, which seeks to change, which acknowledges its offense, and seeks out the merciful heart of Christ. And our conversion will usually deepen year by year as we center our life on our Lord. When someone chooses evil, the person wills it under the notion of something that is good. If I can use the example of what I saw in the news a while back, when some people were robbing a jewelry store, they smashed the windows and took things as they pleased. First, the gravity of the sin is grave, but the fact you destroyed someone's property and you robbed them openly. And in this situation, as in every action, there's a good someone seeks. And the person must ignore that aspect of evil in their action and focus only on the good they desire. In this case, they ignore the evil of destroying someone's property and the evil of theft to receive the good of gold and silver. And I found this very fascinating. He goes on to say, the person must move the intellect to judge in such a way as to exclude the evil or to minimize it so that it is easier to choose. This happens in every evil choice a person makes. And why the only cure is repentance, to seek restitution for the wrong done, and to strive to live a good and holy life with God's grace. Otherwise, the good old conscience will haunt you. The author goes on to say, this is why when people commit evils, over time they habituate their intellect to not look at the evil of it. Later, they begin to change their mind about whether the action is actually evil at all. For the root of freedom resides in our intellect or, or, or our ability to reason about acting in the world in a righteous manner. This is the whole point of the phrase, the truth will set you free. Because if we don't get the truth right, we will not get free will right. There is a crisis of truth in the culture, especially moral truth. And, and in order to choose rightly, we have to think rightly. God gives the commandments for this very purpose to help us to think rightly and choose rightly. Or if we choose wrongly, to repent and not be so proud. In fact, this is our problem with sin. When we reflect, we realize we did not act in accordance with what we know to be true, what we know to be right. 
And this is why we mourn for our sin. We know the truth in our heart, and our intellect cannot go against the truth, for it was made for this very purpose. The problem lies when people attempt to absolve themselves from the evil they have done, or they ignore it, or they try to rationalize around it. This is what we would call a bad will. Will it does not seek to confess or conform with the truth or moral law that one knows to be true. For the law of God is written on the human heart, and it beats to confess its sin when we try to conceal it. This is why God gave us the confession and why we start the Mass with a confession. To heal the heart that's wounded by its sin. This is why wise men don't call themselves good, but sinners. And if they become good as a result of following Christ, they humbly acknowledge God's grace, God's mercy, and God's goodness.